So now the first course is laid and we're leveled around. Before we go on to the next course, I will just double check, make sure that these two are the same, and they are, that these two are the same. Do then is just double check my diagonals, and I'm happy with everything I've got there. So what I need to do now is I'm just going to infill the middle, and then I'll go on to um, do the next courses. I'm going to make myself because these bricks are um, not a gauge that is uh, that familiar. Uh, I'm going to keep making myself uh, another. A uh, small gauge rod just to keep my gauge here as well. So, next time you see it, it'll be infilled with a gauge rod and I'll start the second course. Right, okay, so we're gonna sort out the bond or gonna try and sort the bond out for this. And you can see it doesn't work very well because we've got a plinth either end, well all the way around I should say, um, which is going to bring that uh, three and a half brick first course to, um, uh, again I'm probably going to do about four course on there before I put the plinth on, but again this is just like setting the bond out. So what I would try to normally do is work from these joints because these are my main joints uh, that I'm going to follow up as I go. Um, or although I do have a bit of a license for these, which I'll mention at the end, but what I try to do is I try to get those into the brickwork um, below the plinth so that all the joints run up. Um, that just looks um, the best way every time. Um, but here you can see I've got a little bit of a problem because um, if this, these three bricks were going to carry on up, I would definitely have to change the bond underneath so I can move that one across to line up with that. And then obviously the um, plinth bricks, I would have to change this arrangement as well to push that into the center of this one. But the license I have on this is these three are gonna be two twisted piers. So that joint is not gonna be a constant thing. That's gonna gradually twist round and that's gonna twist round as well. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to obviously just cut my corner ones to get a splay both ways. And then I think I will ignore this perp with, in relation to these ones because I am going to twist. One thing I might do, I might introduce these to give me a break as well. So the idea I'm having is to do about four course of these one course of them, then these, then a plinth again, and maybe another plinth, um, or just a little oversail course on this one, um, just to give it a break between everything. And then you may not notice the difference on that one at all. Um, but pretty much like the unfinished Florentine arch over there, um, I made that up as I went along really. So. Um, I'm gonna, I've got an idea for this, and um, what I used to do would be do a drawing so I knew exactly what I was going to be doing and to follow. And obviously when the students are in here, they will have drawings to follow. But um, me making this up as I go along, um, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So um, uh, my next um, thing I'm going to do then is uh, obviously just cut these ones and put a splay on them so I can get those um all ready and then i'll lay all my base courses get my twist and square out and we'll start twisting laid, um, all corners and so what i want to do now is i want to make sure that this end is square by putting this level on the face and then a square on the level like this just to make sure that i'm happy that everything lines up. I can see there that I need to bring this end around a bit. So I'll do that now. Make sure that is square now. On the 
Sorry. That is good. So keep them ones like that. Keep the level right. Bring it to my level. And then with a tape measure. Make sure I'm happy, first of all, with the size of the joints. I can see that that's, that is quite good, I quite like that. So I am 8.26 and I'm 8.26. So that is quite nice. So we're square across the front, so we just want to check this corner. So we'll do the diagonals, and there I am, 940. And I just want to do that with you there, and I am 9, or well 943, so I'm about 308 square. So we'll go back to this, and I can see that that one does want to do in a touch. Done that. I've now bought the length of that. 8.25. Let's touch this one out of touch. Double check on these sides. 4.60 and 4.60. Lovely. It's just about Eight, oh sorry, 9.41 and um, that's not far off at all, that's only about a millimetre that is, so I'll reasonably have that now. Now that I've got the sides all the same and the two diagonals are equal, I'm now going to lay um, all the ones in between. So I've just uh, been on the DeWalt and um, cut some plinth returns, handed as well. So I've got some right-handed and left-handed ones here because obviously I will be needing them on every corner. So um, what I'm thinking of doing, as I said before, is doing those and then possibly putting this through on top of them and then having a plinth back on top to get me back to here and then I'll have to step in again to start the twists. Um, so we'll see what this looks like. obviously on the back because we're not going to be able to see them so we'll just run through with normal bricks on that and um, but then I think what we're going to do next is put these back on so we can have some plinths going through the top um, of the oven and then we were we've got to step back then because we've got to get back to three bricks which is what this is um, or we could simply start the twist on here but I'd, I'd like to have a little bit of a, uh, an oversight before the twist starts. So I am thinking that we'll put this back um, simply because I like that feature as well. And um, yeah, we'll do something a little bit different here just to, uh, could be plimps again, we could put plimps back on here um, just to reduce it back down to this. Uh, and then we'll do the double twist. So just a, a little reminder what we're doing, we're gonna have here, here, and up here, there, and they're both going to twist round. Now I might start them at 45 to the face, 
one more time at 90, I'm not too sure yet. Um, but whatever we do, I'll try and do it so it looks the best, uh, or the best I can do it anyway. So we'll just carry on, see what we come up with. A bit of a Right, so to get the second course of plinths, obviously I've had to put these on because when you lay a plinth brick, obviously you've got the full bed, just like uh, laying a normal brick, but when you um, turn up the other way, this is the bed. So you can see here, if I bed that on there, that just wanna fall. So I've had to do these. So as soon as I bedded it, I'll just put a, a dry brick on top there just to hold it in place until we get all the way round. And then I just have to carefully take them off when I uh, do the next ones as well. So a little bit of a tricky operation, but that's uh, what we normally do. So we'll do it. And then, so I get a little bit late, so 20 past five. So I'll get these plinths round and then I'll probably mix up ready for tomorrow. Um, I'm finding, um, as I always have done really, if you mix up lime mortar the day before and then just keep it uh, a little bit saturated some water over it and then the next day tip the water off and then pull it back through the mixer and it mixes up really nice. Um, just a fresh lime mix I find is just kind of like um, gritty dead type of uh, texture to it, which is really unusual. But like I said, mix up the day before, and well, the stuff I'm using here, I mixed up the last time I was here, so that was a week ago, and uh, I just put it through the mixer again, and that's come up really nice. And so yeah, right, I'm now gonna get this second course through, so I'm just gonna grab myself a few more plinth bricks, because I've got all the ones I cut for the returns. I haven't got any whole ones here, so I'll just go get a few of them. Iron it down to start off with. Right, can we get that on there? Okay. Level up. It's got to go down a bit like this. Too bad. So just got to go down, so I'll tap that down as I tap that in. Bigger a touch more.
So a lot of people call this um, bird's beak. Um, when I was an apprentice, this was always uh, called Old English. And I think that sounds better than bird's beak, to be honest. So um, it's kind of a variation of uh, weather struck and weather pointing, where um, you use the board and a Frenchman to um, cut this off. Um, but with this uh, old English style, you actually just do the same with the, the bottom edge as you do with the top. And it is just to dig in the bottom and form a V. Hence a lot of people call it a V joint. And I, I haven't done this many times, but when I do it, I do like it. It really does highlight the house of each individual brick. Bit of dirt there. And I always think that's a good thing. I don't like losing the edges or the arises um, with like a flush joint. But some bricks um, really are um, well, definitely need like a flush joint because you wouldn't be able to really do this uh, V joint externally with uh, a soft brick. Now these Britannia bricks that I'm using here, they are an imperial, and normally the imperial bricks are quite soft because they're obviously made to. Uh, match um, the older style bricks and they used obviously a lot in restoration work and for that reason they are um, made softer like the original so again you wouldn't want to do a an old english on a, a soft red right so I'm going to have to do the make the freeze work uh, joint and tomorrow. I just want to give that a little bit more time to dry out. And I'm going to use like the tuck lines just to compress it a little bit. But that's um, the bird's beak, as a lot of people call it, or the old English, as I prefer to call it, or a V joint, as other people call it. I've just got to go around the far end, and then I'll put a mix on ready for tomorrow. Right, I'm using slightly thinner bricks on this one, so my gauge is going to alter, so these ones are like 65 mil total gauge. So that's what we're going to connect in. Sticky more.
So here we are on like the fifth course, the fourth course of um, the twists, and we'll carry on doing this uh, in a short while. But um, what I am finding, obviously, these are imperial bricks, and um, the tool I've got is designed for metric bricks. So it just means that the spin isn't quite right. It's just a um, slight uneven unevenness to it. Um, but I'm going to carry on because it's not a great deal, um, and we'll just see how it goes. But those of you who are like, interested in the twisted work, um, a job we've got coming up very soon, I think, is um, something that's not been done ever. You see with this twist, this is a double. Just go above, you might see it. Appreciate it a little bit better like that, because with the light on it, how it is, um, doesn't really give you the true effect of it yet. But this is like a double twist. I've done like a twisted arch, I've done the triple twist, as you've probably seen here on uh, YouTube. And um, I've done a spiral twist as well, with a, a half going around a circular column of brickwork. But all of those, I can use the tool that is up on my bucket there. But the twist that we've got coming up soon is a tapered twist. So as the twist starts, it leans in and on three sides. So the twist continues round as normal, but it reduces in size on three sides. So it's uh, on top of a chimney press that we're going to be doing soon. And uh, again, I, I've never done anything like it. I've never seen anything like it. So if you like Twister stuff, keep tuned for that because I think that will be uh, a world's first. But if anybody can prove me wrong in that, then um, I'd love to see it as well. So anyway, we're now going to carry on with this and then go and get some tea and finish this next weekend. Okay, so we got to the top of the twist. So what we're going to do is we are going to do something very similar to the plinth courses we've got.
So I'm just about to run in the top course above those lovely dentals and uh, I just thought I might as well use these um, brick lamps that I've uh, been asked to try out and yeah I just put them on here. I know um, I could have done this with a level but I just thought I'll just try them out and I think these are pretty cool. Really good. Um, I can see me using these quite a lot. You can just see on there. Uh, behind where it says place thumb here. I don't know if you can read it. But that is just brickworktools.com. And uh, I know let's say there's only a, like a short little run here, but even so, I just think this is superb. I was looking forward to using these, but it's better than what I first imagined. So uh, if anybody wants to check them out, that's where to go. Brickworktools.com have a little look. Again, obviously I know these um, would be really, really good on like long runs and everything, but they're a bit awkward up here, uh, where you're going to put your pin in and stuff like that, uh, when you've got over sailing courses, but that just worked really well. I really like that. Anyway, I'm now going to run these ones in, and um, then we'll do the makeshift uh, chimney pots after. I have no idea what that noise is outside. It sounds like a tractor or a traction engine going past. I feel a bit tempted to go investigate. Well, I'm loving these bricks and I'm loving these clamps. That sounds better. 